Molweni bafundi, namkelekile eklaseni yanamhlanje. Hello students, welcome to today's class. This is the first of a series of Kosa lessons. I'm going to read a conversation and then I'll repeat it with uh, the translation. And then we'll get into some grammar and uh, some more sentences. Um, if this is your first time uh, learning Kosa um, and you're not sure how to make these clicks, I suggest looking at some videos online on YouTube um, that teach the Kosa clicks um, because I don't want to uh, have to um, make videos that already exist and there's some pretty good ones out there. Uh, I'll try and add a link to some of them in the description. I'm also going to try and add the PDF of this lesson in the description. Molo sisi. Molo buti. Oh, uteta isi kosa. Ewe, ndi si teta kanini kodwa. Andi kwazi uku si teta gakushle. Ndi safunda. Hai, uya kwazi. Usi teta kamnandi. Ndi abulela sisi. Sala gakushle. Enkosi buti. Hamba gakushle. Molo sisi. Hello sister. Molo buti. Hello brother. Oh, uteta is kosa. Oh, you speak kosa. Ewe, ndisi teta kanini. Yes, I speak it a bit. Kodwa, andi kwazi ukusi teta gakushle. But, I can't speak it well. Ndisafunda. I am still learning. Hai. Uyakwazi. No, you can. Usiteta kamnandi. You speak it nicely. Ndiabule la sisi. I am grateful, sister. Or well, thank you, sister. Salaga kushle. Go well. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Stay well. Enkosi buti. Hamba Thank you, brother. Go well. So I like to start with the verbs because I think they are the most important part of vocabulary. If you want to just memorize and learn one thing, I would suggest to memorize the verbs. They'll get you the furthest, the quickest. So first we have teta, speak. Teta. Notice if there is an H in the written form, that, that uh, the consonant is aspirated, so you have to t you have to hear that H teta. Uh, the importance will become more clear later when you notice words without the H. Then we have quasi to know how or to be able to quasi bulela bulela to be grateful funda learn or read funda also study think of the english it's african english word the fundi a fundi is someone who is um, a buffon at something really good at something and in order to become a fundi he had to learn or study sala is to stay sala hamba to go or to walk hamba Kanini, a little. Kanini. Kamnandi, nicely. Kamnandi. Gakushle, well. Gakushle, kodwa, but. Kodwa. Enkosi, thank you. Enkosi. So, how it works. First, we'll look at the verbs, and um, it's important here to notice that there are two ways of saying a using a verb in Kosa. You have a short form and a long form. The long form has this little ya in between, which doesn't translate as anything. Um, basically, if you say uh, the verb as a, a statement on its own, for instance, I am studying, you would say ndiafunda. 
if you add something after the verb, for instance, I'm studying cosa, then this ya generally falls away. Defunda isi cosa. Defunda isi cosa. And then to form the negative, you quite simply add an a in front of the word and then the a at the end of the verb turns into an e. Andifundi. I am not studying. I am not learning. I am not reading. Andifundi. So, as you might have been able to deduct from that, the ndi means I, and then funda means learn. Ya yeah, doesn't mean anything, it's just the long form of the verb if you want to say uh, something on its own. Ndia funda. You can also hear the ya form when something follows it. Um, it depends what is really emphasized in the sentence. Um, Sometimes if you want to emphasize more the fact that you are learning cosa and then you would say ndia funda isi cosa. And if you are emphasizing the fact that you're learning cosa, ndia funda isi cosa. But it's not really a rule set in stone. It's good to, just to take note of this. Then we have uya te ta. You speak or you are speaking. Uya te ta. The uh, the root of the verb here is teta. And then uteta isibulu, you speak uh, Afrikaans, uteta isibulu. And auteti, you don't speak auteti. Again, we're adding a in front of the u. This w is just because your mouth uh, naturally produces this w sound when you say au, au, au. And then the e at the end again because it's negative, auteti. This could also mean he or she is speaking, uyateta, but in that case we would uh, have to raise the tone at the beginning instead of saying uyateta to be uyateta. The next example, ndiahamba, I am going, I am leaving, I am walking, ndiahamba. Notice that the second last syllable is always stretched in kosa, so we don't just say ndiahamba, ndiahamba. You'll get used to this. Ndihamba ngoku. I am leaving now. I am going now. So we added something and the ya falls away. Ndihamba ngoku. Andihambi. I am not going. I am not leaving. Andihambi. The next point I would like to talk about is um, how to create an adverb in Kosa. So we have the uh, adjective stem, which here in this first example is schle, meaning beautiful. Schle. Maybe you know of uh, some place names in South Africa that have this. For instance, Zweli schle, which means beautiful country, etc. Now to form the adverb, we add something, usually just ka, but in this case it's gaku. Gaku schle means well or beautifully. Notice that the k without an h is not aspirated, so um, it almost sounds like a G. It's um, very often closer to a G than to a K. It's not this K that we're used to in English, but more G, 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 Kushle. The next one, Ngini, means small, Ngini, and Kanini, Kanini is a little, a little bit. Then we have Nandi, meaning sweet or nice or lekker. And gamnandi means nicely. The next grammar point is quite easy. It's how we form infinitives in Tosa. An infinitive is basically saying to do something, to speak, to go, etc. Here you just add ugu, ugu in front of the verb and you have the infinitive. Ugu teta is to speak, ugu hamba is to go. Defunda ugu teta is ikosa. I, will, I am studying or learning to speak is it cosa. De quasi ukufunda ukuteta is it cosa. I am able to study to speak is it cosa. I can learn to speak cosa. De quasi ukufunda ukuteta is it cosa. The next conversation goes as follows. Molo John, unjani. Molo no malanga. Ndikona enkosi. 
Wena Nam de Reit in Kurs. Molo John Unjani. Hello John, how are you? Molo no Malanga in the corner in Kursi. Wena Hi no Malanga, I am fine, thank you. And you? Nam de Reit in Kurs. Me too, I am okay, thank you. I'm fine too, thank you. Here we have the vocabulary njani, meaning how. So notice how unjani was how are you. So we again have this u prefix, meaning you, and then njani, you are how. There's no verb really, or they don't really use um, to be in the present tense. You wouldn't say you are how, you just say you how, unjani. Uh, and how am I would be ndinjani. Okay, then we've got corner, which means present here, around here. If you ask, is someone there, you would say, Ujon ukona, is John there? Ewe, Ujon ukona, yes, John is here. So when you ask someone how you are and they answer, I am here, ndikona, it's a way of saying, I am well. Wena, you, wena is uh, an emphatic pronoun, so you can use it on its own. It doesn't come before a verb like with u. Unjani is you or how. But wena is just you. And you? Nam means and me. So we've got two words here actually. It's na with and m with me. Uh, in other words, me too. Me too, ndi right. Ndi I am right. I'm all right. I'm well. Some more words, isibulu, you might have noticed the languages start with isi, isikosa, the kosa language, isibulu, Afrikaans language. Um, a lot of Afrikaans words that were taken into kosa um, replaced the R with an L. So uh, you'll see a lot of Afrikaans words if you notice um, the L in place of the R. Then we have isingesi, English, isingesi. Notice that ng isn't just ng, but also g at the end. So it's ng, like in the English word anger. Then we've got ngoku, ngoku meaning now. So let's try and match these sentences. I'm actually going to just read slowly through the Kosa sentences and let you do the matching on your own. If you have questions, then write them in the comments down below. Hambangoku. Hambangoku. Ufunda isingesi na. Ufunda isingesi na. This na is a question particle. It's often added at the end of a question, just to inform the listener that you're asking a question. Ufunda isingesi na. Anditeti isizulu. Anditeti isizulu. Nditeta isingesi kodwa and teti isibulu. Nditeta isingesi kodwa and teti isibulu. Ndifunda isi kosa ngoku. Ndifunda isi kosa ngoku. Uteta isibulu na. Uteta isibulu na. Ukwazi ukuteta isi kosa na. Ukwazi ukuteta isi kosa na. Uhamba ngoku na. Uhamba ngoku na. That was it for lesson one. I hope you could understand my explanations. And don't worry if uh, there were some parts that you didn't understand. I purposefully didn't explain all the nitty gritty grammar details. Um, hopefully you can still follow the language as uh, as it goes on in the next lessons.